Hi, I'm Neil Oseman and welcome to the Dark Side Guides. Here I'll be sharing some of the things I learnt during the wallet crunching, heart palpitating process of making my 35mm pilot for the dark side of the earth. Digital Intermediate, or DI, is a type of post-production in which footage originated on film is converted to the digital realm for editing, visual effects and grading before being recorded back to film for distribution. In this guide I'll take you through this complex process step by step. I'm going to assume that you have access to a Mac running Final Cut Pro. Let's begin at the end of the shoot. Your film is, quite literally, in the can, and your sound recordist has handed you your audio rushes on data CDs. Your camera negative needs to go to the lab to be processed and telecined, or TK'd, i.e. transferred to videotape. You'd be advised to TK to Mini DV because it'll be cheaper and the picture quality is unimportant at this stage. For each roll of film processed, your lab will give you a mini DV tape containing the corresponding footage and, crucially, corresponding time codes. Beware that your lab may consolidate two or three camera rolls into one lab roll for TK. From that point onwards, forget the camera roll numbers and only ever use the lab roll numbers. When capturing these tapes in Final Cut, make sure you enter the roll numbers correctly. The safest format is three digits. The timecode, of course, will be captured along with the image, meaning every edit you make can be replicated later with high-quality scans of the film negative. Next, you can import the audio rushes and sync them to the picture using the clapperboard. After that, you can edit just as if you'd shot on DV. However, you should avoid applying any effects, filters or speed changes at this point. Once you're happy with your offline edit, export an EDL, that's an edit decision list, from Final Cut Pro. This is a list of clips used in the edit, giving the in and out time codes for each, along with its roll number. Send this to your scanning facility, along with your negative and an empty hard drive. They will then scan only the frames required in your edit. You should request handles, i.e. extra frames on the beginning and end of each shot, so that you can make fine adjustments to the edit later if you wish. Eight frames is standard for this. The minimum resolution you'll need to scan your negat is 2K, 2048 by 1556 pixels. Higher resolutions are becoming more common now, but 2K will still look good when it's recorded back to film. So now you have a hard drive filled with DPX files, or Cineon files which are similar. Each frame is an individual file, and you'll find you can open them as stills in Graphics Converter, which comes as standard with MacOS. If you want to play them back, you can also use Graphics Converter to batch convert the DPX sequence to a JPEG sequence, then open Final Cut Pro, set the freeze frame duration to two frames in the preferences, import your JPEGs, select them all, and drag them wholesale onto your timeline. Alternatively, effects software like Shake will play a DPX sequence. If the film was shot with anamorphic lenses, the squashed look will be retained in your scanned files, and you should leave them this way. You may find you have extra material on the left-hand side of all your shots. This is the Academy soundtrack area, measuring 220 pixels. Your online or grading facility will get rid of it later. If your film contains any visual effects, it's at this point that you'll hand the relevant DPX frames over to your effects team and set them to work. It's important that the finished shots they send back to you have the same time codes and are in the exact same format, DPX 10-bit log. The next step is the online. Before you leave home, export a QuickTime file from your offline edit. 
Take this along with your EDL and all your DPX files, including the finished effect shots if applicable, to your post house. In theory, their online editing software will automatically find the right DPX frames to match the EDL, and your film is magically assembled or conformed in full 2K resolution. In practice, if you have any kind of effects in your film, you'll probably find yourself having to make manual adjustments. You can check everything's where it should be by laying the offline quick time you've brought onto the timeline and comparing it to the online. Normally, your online facility will also do your grade, but in our case, the online was output as a new DPX sequence to my hard drive, ready to take elsewhere for grading. However, I discovered some errors in the online, which I had to painstakingly correct by the seemingly archaic method of copying, moving and renaming DPX files. In fact, it is actually possible to do your whole online this way, but I wouldn't recommend it. Next comes your grade, or digital colour timing. Always grade at a facility who have a working relationship with a facility who will shoot the images back onto film. That way the colourist will be able to apply a lookup table, or LUT, to the digital images, which will accurately simulate, during the grade, how it will all look when recorded onto film by that particular facility. After the grade, your colourist will paint out any dust and scratches and render out a final DPX sequence for the film record. Once your images are back on film, you'll be invited to view a mute print to confirm that the grade looks as it did in the digital domain. Next, it's time for your images to be reunited with the soundtrack, which will have been on a journey all of its own. You'll want a cinematic 5.1 surround sound mix to go with your 35mm images. You may find a sound mixer with his own Garage 5.1 suite, but you'll probably want to spend an hour or two in a proper studio doing the final tweaks. You'll need to get your finished mix onto MO disc before it can be combined with your images on film. The only way to do this is through Dolby. First you need to book some time at one of the Dolby approved studios, perhaps as little as half an hour if you're literally just transferring your finished six channels onto MO disc. Then you have to contact Dolby and pay the fixed service fee. They will then give the studio authorization to proceed. For a feature, you will also have to pay for a Dolby technician to be present at your mix. The MO disc will then be shot to film, creating an optical soundtrack. The lab will combine this with your images, creating a sync sound negative before producing a combined answer print. So, how much did all this cost? Here's how it stacked up on the dark side of the earth. Bear in mind that we got deals on most of these items. We had 6,700 feet of negative to process in Telecine, costing £670. We scanned around 525 feet at a cost of £710. We got the online, the grade, the film record and the stock for the film record for free so the next costs were for the soundtrack. Since we had links with the SAE Institute, we qualified as a film school for Dolby's fixed service fee, so we got it at half price, £175. This included one blank MO disc. Half an hour in a Dolby approved studio to transfer our mix to MO disc cost £125. Shooting and processing the optical soundtrack, £215. The combined into negative we got for free. Answer print, 545 feet, £140. Couriers to transport hard drives full of data around, £25. That's a grand total of £2,060 post-production costs for the 5-minute pilot, plus fat. There's no denying the process is simpler with video but film will always capture more beautiful images than any digital format. Ask yourself the question, are you making a video or are you making a film? Good luck.